the period after the Russian Revolution and the First World War was chaotic, to say the least, in Central and Eastern Europe. New states emerged, and some found a quick demise to be replaced by new fragile states. And did you know that in 1918, there existed four Ukrainian states? How that all happened is what you're going to learn in this video. Keep watching. The largest part of what is today Ukraine was part of the Russian Empire. Today's Western Ukraine was part of the Austro-Hungarian Empire. Contrary to Finland and Poland, which were recognized as discrete parts of the Russian Empire, there was no single Ukrainian province. According to historian Laura Engelstein, there had never been a politically defined Ukrainian state. Cultural differences with the Russians became apparent in the 13th and 17th century because then a big part of Ukraine was part of the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth. Over the course of the 19th century, when Ukraine was part of the Russian Empire, nationalism was on the rise and also among the Ukrainians. Flash forward to February 1917 or March according to the new calendar, the February Revolution took place. The Russian Tsar abdicated and a provisional government took office. A patriotic demonstration took place in Kyiv, the Ukrainian capital. Shortly after, the Ukrainian Central Council, also known as the Rada, was established. What you need to know is that the Rada didn't strive for independence. They strived for autonomy within the new Russian state. Then, in October or November, the October Revolution took place. Now, at first, the Rada supported it because they saw it as a deepening of the revolution, but soon they condemned it. Inaugurated on the 7th of October 1917, the Ukrainian National Republic, the UNR, also known as the Ukrainian People's Republic, the UPR, was seen as an autonomous Ukraine within a democratic Russian state. Its platform combined socialist with liberal principles, the abolition of private property and land and state control of industry, on the one hand, rule of law, local self-government, civil liberties, and national personal autonomy for ethnic minorities on the other. It affirmed its support for the war, but hoped for a peace negotiated by both sides to the conflict and respecting the rights of the Ukrainian nation. Not all Ukrainian parties were in favor of national independence. However, on the 12th of January, national independence was asserted. The Bolsheviks were not amused and they accused the Rada of betraying the revolution. Now, do you notice that most Bolsheviks in Ukraine were either of Russian or Jewish descent and therefore they ignored the Ukrainian issue. Soon, peace talks between the Bolsheviks and the Central Powers started at Brest-Litovsk and this became a struggle. On January 30th, Leon Trotsky, Bolshevik leader, he came to Brest-Litovsk and he stated, no war, no peace. In other words, Trotsky refused to sign anything. Who did sign something was the Ukrainian Rada, because they sent their own delegation to Brest-Litovsk to sign a separate peace treaty with the Central Powers, and their government was recognized by them. Losing patience, they signed a separate treaty with Ukraine on the 9th of February, under this so-called bread peace, Ukraine agreed to supply Germany and Austria-Hungary with a million tons of bread annually in exchange for their recognition of the Ukrainian People's Republic that had recently declared its independence from Russia. However, by the time it was signed, the Bolsheviks had taken power in Kyiv and toppled the first UNR. How that happened, we need to go back a little bit because I mentioned that the Bolsheviks earlier tried to seize power in Kyiv, which failed. And therefore, they set up their rival government in Kharkiv, firstly known as the Ukrainian People's Republic of Soviets. Do notice that around the same time, several short-lived Soviet republics throughout Ukraine sprung up in regions such as Odessa, Crimea and Donetsk. 
The Kharkov People's Republic and People's Secretariat had no roots in the local population, no army and no internal coherence. Its own members disagreed on its proper relationship to Moscow. In short, the first putative Soviet government of Ukraine did not really exist. Interesting is that in 2014, a very, very short-lived Kharkov People's Republic saw the light of day as well, which I did cover on location. Link is in the top right corner. The Kharkov government did send delegates to Brest-Litovsk to challenge the Ukrainian Rada when it came down to the representation of Ukraine. The central powers refused to recognize them, and thus the Kharkov Bolsheviks, they aligned themselves with the delegation of Moscow. Near the end of January 1918, the Kiev Arsenal uprising took place, where Bolsheviks tried to seize power in the capital once again. Ukrainian forces, led by Simon Petliora, they came in and crushed this uprising. However, the Ukrainian victory was short-lived because soon Bolshevik reinforcements came in and after an 11-day artillery barrage, they managed to capture the capital of Ukraine. The Ukrainian Rada withdrew to Zhytomyr. This was known as the first Soviet conquest of Ukraine. Head of the Red Army troops, former Tsarist officer Mikhail Murarev unleashed a reign of terror and executed as many as 5,000 people, of which half were his former colleagues from the Tsarist army. The UNR government, they had a trump card, because their government was recognized by the central powers, and thus they reached out to them. The central powers, they wanted to seize control over Ukraine because of the grain. And thus, in February 1918, Austro-Hungarian troops and German troops marched into Ukraine. Lenin signed the Brest-Litovsk Treaty and therefore the Bolsheviks recognized the UNR. The Central Powers advance stopped in May at Rostov and Don. The relation between the UNR government and the Central Powers was deteriorating. German commander Max Hoffmann wrote the following about this in his diary. The difficulty in the Ukraine is simply that the Central Rada has only our rifles behind it. The moment we withdraw our troops, their authority will collapse at once. This shows that the state was very unstable. To make it more stable, the Germans, they replaced the UNR government and put the Russian-speaking former Tsarist army officer Pavlo Skoropatsky in charge. He became the hetman of Ukraine, a new central powers puppet state. Skoropatsky's regime had a conservative social agenda. Assuming executive and military authority, he reversed the Rada's generally socialist program, reinstating private property and censorship, banning committees and strikes, and restoring the Cossacks to their erstwhile status as a privileged estate, hoping thereby to win the support of the more prosperous peasants. All this was shielded by the German occupation. Flash forward to the 11th of November 1918, the armistice was signed and the First World War had come to an end. This also meant that the conditions of the Brest-Litovsk Treaty were annulled and thus the Germans had to withdraw from Ukraine which happened mid-December 1918. Ukrainian hetman Pavlo Skoropatsky went with the Germans. It is said that he disguised himself as a wounded German army officer to get out. Now a five-man directory had taken office in Kyiv. On the 22nd of January 1919, Ukrainian independence was proclaimed. Again. But was it going to last? More on that later. This video wouldn't be complete without mentioning the fourth Ukrainian state that saw the light of day in 1918. And I'm talking about the West Ukrainian People's Republic. The West Ukrainian People's Republic controlled most of Eastern Galicia that previously belonged to the Austro-Hungarian Empire that had crumbled. The capital of the new state was Lviv. Where the UNR had come into conflict with the Bolsheviks, the West Ukrainians came in conflict with the Poles. Because in the same month, Poland was reborn. And the Poles, they also claimed Eastern Galicia. See, the region was very mixed. 
Poles had a slim majority in the major city, Lviv. Ukrainians dominated the countryside, and this gave way for conflict. How these states found their demise is something that I will cover in a future episode. In this video, I'll cover the states that claim to be Ukrainian, but there were more states. For example, the free territory of Nestor Magno. Thanks to my patrons and a special thanks to Liam Devlin, Damian Wallace, Connor, Philip Jordan, Jakob Musland, Nick Terranova, Haley Mark Little Hill, Janusz Dojinkiewicz, Joanne Justin Trebel, Tanya Dixie, Henry Clarkson, Rob Park, Andrea Martic, Susanna Di Bella, John Beach, Luis Peixera, Fernando Lopez Ojeda and Mike West. Uh, at the moment I'm not very well, um, maybe you've noticed it, I contracted COVID and I'm uh, fairly ill and also the news from what's happening in Ukraine uh, has made a huge impact on me. Anyway, if you want to have uh, an overview of Ukraine's territorial evolution, you can click right here. And I mentioned the press peace treaty. Um, you can click that right here. I want to thank you for watching. And I'm very happy that this video is done.